What's up, YouTube? So I am getting into long range shooting. Uh, I feel like I've been in it forever now because of all the information that I've gotten off online and just there's so much to absorb. What I didn't see is um, a lot of new guys getting into it and kind of explaining, you know, the reasonings behind what they did uh, and getting into a situation where you're not so set in your ways uh, about what makes sense to you and what doesn't and, and really what you feel is supposed to be correct. Uh, so I was going to kind of start a video blog, I guess you should say, about um, my experiences and my trials and tribulations and kind of the reasoning why I picked the equipment I picked is this is my intro into my first rifle and hopefully it'll help you maybe pick out yours as well at least hopefully give you some information this is not going to be for your um, hardcore uh, long-range shooter that's been in the game for a while uh, has all their works figured out and knows exactly what they want this is going to be for the new guy and we're going to kind of grow together and and see if you know these videos pick up traction if they make sense if they help people out um if not don't watch it uh, again it is not going to be for the guys who uh you know know everything because i don't i'm just going to kind of give you some insight on my equipment and why i picked it and hopefully it'll help you not have to watch and waste your life watching YouTube videos for weeks on end at three o'clock in the morning. So uh, starting out, uh, this is an SPS Tactical Remington 700 and 308. 308 is readily available at most gun stores. Uh, it's a military round, so there's always a lot of it. Uh, it's a very popular caliber. There's a ton of information online uh, if you wanted to build your own loads and stuff like that. It's just a really, really common caliber. So uh, there is probably, from what I've seen, the most information on loading data for the 308 and ballistics and all that stuff. So uh, that might be one of the reasons you want to get into it. I'm going to be shooting a thousand yard or less. Uh, so I know the 308 is capable of doing that and doing it consistently. Um, and uh, I just wanted something that was a little bit more economical to shoot. You can find the ammo relatively inexpensive compared to some of the other higher end calibers where they don't even make a ball ammunition for it. Uh, you're kind of stuck hand loading your ammunition if you want to have it readily available. So anyways, that's why I went with the 308. It's going to get me out to the distances that I need to get me out to. It's going to be consistent. And uh, there's a ton of information if I do decide to get into reloading. Uh, I don't see it in my foreseeable future uh, because I'm just not going to be putting that much rounds down range even when I am uh, doing my long range stuff. Uh, I might have to start working up hand loads or get somebody to make them for me uh, if what I'm thinking doesn't work out, which is one of those growing pains that we'll probably go through together is going to be my round selection. From what I've seen, uh, 168 grain, federal gold medal match, the Botel Hall points uh, seem to be able to get, that. that's the projectile that people put into their hand loads. So I'm gonna see if I can't do that in a factory load and get consistent enough to it to be at least be competitive. Uh, anything beyond that, you're getting into bench stuff and that's just not really where I wanna be right now. Um, I do have a bench rifle. Uh, I'm going to use that to kind of hone my skills in because they're super, super sensitive. So um, it's in 223, so it's really inexpensive to shoot. And it shoots uh, green tip really, really well, sub MOA at 100 yards. So, anyways, getting back to uh, this rifle the Remington 700, I really like the Remington action. One of the things, one of the first things that I did um, was change out the bolt knob 
uh, I went nothing fancy recommended this one it's on one of his videos threads I can't remember who makes it they are on eBay they're like 35 bucks I think uh, it just presses on and each side it's got some o-rings that hold it in place I've probably put uh, 150 rounds through this rifle with this bolt knob on it I, I haven't had any problems uh, it makes it really really easy very very tactile um, much easier than than getting a getting a grasp on the the stock lever much less expensive than getting your bolt knob threaded and getting a big bolt put on it. So it does its job. Uh, it's just fine. I don't think it's going to break. It's made out of this same car, uh, reinforced fiber reinforced stuff that Magpul uses. Uh, so just a great little buy, just something a little gimmicky to put on there, but it definitely does help out. Uh, I have no clearing issues. Uh, as far as my scope's concerned, so it all works really, really well. Um, I went ahead and bought the Magpul Hunter stock. I think I paid right around two fifteen for it off of eBay. That was shipped. Uh, I think you can find them for that price pretty easily. Um, I did get the bottom metal with mine as well. It didn't come with any mags. But I went and bought two mags. I think it was like 75 bucks for the mags. Two 10-round mags. Uh, that was also off of eBay. Um, I have the ten, I have this Hunter stock on my daughter's 1022. And I was just really, really impressed with the quality of it. So I went ahead and got it for my Remington 700. Before I did for either rifle, uh, I did a mounder research. And I will have to say that... Um, from what I've seen, very, very impressive. Aluminum bedded, aluminum, cast aluminum bedded uh, chassis. Uh, if my memory serves me correct, the aluminum bedding uh, comes from right about up here, right in front of the action, all the way back down through the stock. It's got cross bracing built in. It's super, super rigid. Um, there was a couple guys shooting F-Class with their super high-end precision Remington actions. Uh, in, in custom, probably a custom action even at that, uh, and coming from their precision bedded stock for their action, just dropping it into the Remington without doing anything, they weren't seeing any deviations in the shot groups. So to me, that says high quality shit. Magpul's got their stuff together. So, uh, and everything I've ever bought from Magpul's been pretty decent. Um, I don't have any complaints. Their mags work really well for me. Uh, in my AR platforms and I have no complaints uh, for any other products that I put on any of my rifles. Um, I did go get the, oh, one other thing about the stock that I really, really like, uh, I've got a kind of short face. So for me, um, it's, I always have to do some kind of cheek riser and this one's got one built in. You can get different levels. Um, they have a high one and a low one. Uh, the, the medium one worked out just perfect for me from when I had the medium rings on there. Uh, and you can uh, adjust your bump pad forward and backwards if you want it to kind of make it fit your um, whatever position you like to shoot better. Uh, so just something really, really nice. It's got an M-Lock end on it. I do have a, a Harris uh, swivel bipod on there. You know that's pretty standard. I don't. I don't think there's anything to be said other than Harris makes some decent stuff. It's uh, it's a good bipod. Haven't had any issues with it. Um, what I will say about uh, going back to this stock uh, that when I had the factory um, chili green, it's a hog over molded stock with the internal box mag. I had issues feeding. Uh, it, and it could just be me. It's probably more me just being new and not really familiar with the weapon system. But I just think that things should work how they're supposed to work without me having to think about how I'm loading the round into the box magazine. Uh, there's a couple guys, uh, again, I, I watched so many videos. There was several people with the internal box spec that had issues with it. Uh, if you don't get the rounds in there just right, you can have um, failures to feed and issues feeding. And with a bolt, it's supposed to be super duper reliable. So 
Um, that's kind of one of those reasons you buy it. Uh, the lockup's supposed to be the same every single time, so it, you know you get a more consistent shot than out of a, a semi-auto platform. With that being said, this bottom metal for Magpul is pretty phenomenal. Um, after I've installed this stock, which was, by the way, very, very easy to install, it took me about a whole five minutes um, to get it all set up. The magazines fed so, so well into this weapon. Uh, I had no issues after um, after I, after I put the um, Magpul bottom metal in there with their magazines, every shot fed. There wasn't an issue. I didn't have to break my face off of the stock at any point to make sure that there was a round going uh, into the chamber. I knew it, after the first couple mags, I realized that it, it, it's this thing set up right. The one complaint, if I... And it's really not that big of a complaint because it's not that big of a deal to me, but it might be to you. Um, I have messed with some higher end, uh, higher end stocks with uh, the, the the magazine fed um, Remingtons, and the ones that are metal are are, are definitely nicer. Uh, I can't warrant spending at the, at least at this point, just getting into it. I can't warrant spending the three, four hundred dollars that some of those things cost and the mags are about a hundred bucks a piece um, to get uh, to get the magazine to fall away. With the mag pull you do have to um, depress the paddle and pull the magazine out. Not a huge deal for me. You could still do it one handed if you really needed to. And I guess a high stress situation. I don't know why you would be using a bolt gun anyways, but if you did, you could still reach around the mag and uh, drop it out with uh, one hand, but it will not free fall like some of the, um, the metal magazine uh, bottom metals that I have seen with the metal magazines. Um, but it's 60 bucks with a five round magazine or maybe 70 bucks. But for that price, I'm going to pull the mag out. Um, Moving on up, I don't really have anything much else to say about the uh, the stock. Uh, I did go ahead and do a muzzle break. Uh, this was the threaded model. They do have just a straight bull barrel, um, but I bought the threaded model because I'm going to suppress it. Um, this is a dead air break because I'm using the Sandman L um, on this setup. Just waiting for my NFA paperwork to come back. Uh, so hopefully in about six to eight months, um, this rifle will be suppressed. Uh, going to the optic, the one thing that I, I hit on my other video with the Ruger 1022, and I'm gonna um, make a pretty solid stance on it. Uh, getting into this, this is kind of one of those growing pain situations that uh, I think you guys should really know, is that if anything, don't skimp on your base and your rings. Because uh, once you get everything zeroed in, you don't want to be messing with anything. And I did notice when I went out to the range the first uh, the first time, my shot groups weren't very tight. And I thought it was just me because I've never shot a really high-powered rifle before. And I was just kind of figuring out the mechanics of it. And then I go back and, um, you know, I tightened everything back down. And I went back out a couple days later, shot a bunch of rounds, and started getting some tighter groups. Uh, I noticed that towards the middle of the day, I, I, I switched through um, my different platforms. I was out there with my daughter, so I was giving her pointers on um, on rifle shooting uh, because that what she shoots is kind of more similar to. Uh, what I was accustomed to at rifle team in high school and uh, I let her shoot my AR which that's what I shot when I was in the military so I'm really really familiar with that platform um, so I understand the mechanics of it so I got in started shooting started seeing my shot groups really open up come to find out my rings were loosening up I went ahead and cinched them back down re-zeroed maybe 10 rounds later my rings started loosening up again uh, 
I can't remember what brand they were. Uh, they were like a three bolt top uh, with the half inch um, with the half inch bolt, but they were pretty cheaply made. Uh, you could tell this the machining quality wasn't that good. Uh, so I went back to my buddy uh, after basically wasting all that ammuni ammunition because I knew that I was going to have to get a new set of rings. He um, put me onto these Burris. He's got them on uh, all of his rifles, his 300 Win Mag. He set it on there years and years ago. Never had an issue. Shoots well beyond 1,000 yards with his. Uh, and his precision rifles have these rings on it. They're not Seekins or anything like stupid, stupid expensive or Night Force rings or anything like that. But he said they do a job. They hold up just as well as the good ones. I'm going to take his word on it because he's shot and looked through everything. Um, so he's got a pretty good grasp on uh, giving some pointers. So Burris Extreme Tax, uh, I put about 150 rounds through these rings, no issues. Uh, so it really helps with being able to shoot when your rings aren't fucking moving all over the place. <sighs> Going on, because that was a depressing day. Um, I have the Vortex PST. Uh, this is the 6x24x50 uh, first focal plane and with the EBR1 reticle MRAD. I put Vortex optics on all of my rifles and I'm just going to touch in on why because uh, on this rifle I really did go outside the box uh, and try to do as much research as possible on every scope that you see your bench rest guys using, your extreme long range tactical guys using, and uh, trying to find what was gonna fit best. I, Vortex has always been kind of a go-to for me, uh, just because they're a US-based company, I really like their um, warranty. You know, I can buy a used Vortex scope, and if it comes to me messed up, I can send it back to Vortex, and they'll send me a new one if uh, they can't fix it. So just something to think about if you're looking for a company with a really, really good warranty, um, Vortex is one of them. I looked through a lot of glass before I picked, um, picked up a Vortex because I knew I was gonna foot uh, a higher bill. I had a, a little bit of a higher budget that I had set up in my mind for, um, for getting a optic for this rifle. And Really, the only thing that I almost pulled the trigger on was a Citron, the, uh, the S3 in the first focal plane. And it is a little bit more than the um, PST, if I remember correctly. And the one, th really the reason I didn't order it is because uh, they didn't have the reticle that I wanted in stock and I was gonna have to wait and I'm just impatient. Uh, then I went to go order the Vortex. They told me, well, they build these PSTs. They don't have them in stock. So he said it'd be about six to eight weeks for them to build it with the reticle um, that I wanted in it. So I hopped on eBay like I do for a lot of my purchases. And I found one of these used. And it's almost kind of shameful for me to say I paid 650 bucks for it. Uh, for a first focal plane Vortex Viper PST, really screaming good deal. You can find them on there. They're usually in the used, uh, from what I saw, 750, uh, so around 750 range, 800, you know, can get on up there, uh, depending on the condition. This one was a display, it was a bid item. Uh, I, I, like I said, I had seen some sell for you know, around the seven fifty eight hundred dollar range used, they're uh, right around a thousand dollars brand new. Uh, so if you have one at your you know local gun store, uh, I would just say just go ahead and pick it up if you can't find one on eBay for for cheap. Uh, and if you order it, don't get scared because if there's anything wrong with it, Vortex will take care of it. Uh, but I wanted a first focal plane scope. Uh, and the only other brand that I could look at in the price range that had exceptional quality glass across the board from what everybody said 
and what I've seen um, was the Cytron. So there wasn't really too much of a an issue for what I was going to end up picking because I couldn't justify buying a Night Force. I mean, I could have afforded to buy a Night Force, but when I look through them and I look through this, I can't see the difference that is going to make me miss my shot. And that might be one of those trials and tribulations I come back to and I say, um, you should have just bought the, the Night Force from the get-go. But from what I've seen, what I've heard, the hundreds of videos that I've watched on everything, what I've looked through, and uh, my experience with Vortex in the past, they're super, super repeatable. They're super, super consistent. They're very, very accurate um, scopes. They're really, really clear, even at full magnification. Um, they build a really, really good optic. And if the optical clarity is a huge, huge key for you, if you don't look through a night force, you're not going to be able to, this isn't going to, the, the glass on this is not going to hinder you from making your thousand yard shot. It's just not. Um, if you can hit it with a, if you can hit it with a night force, you can hit it with this. I guarantee you put that same shooter behind uh, this optic, they're going to be able to hit their target uh, with no problems. Uh, other than that, I mean, it is a 24x first focal plane. Fo so what that means is um, as you zoom in, your reticle gets bigger. And what that does is it keeps it consistent uh, no matter what magnification you're at, your point of impact's not gonna change. Now you will get some point of impact change with the second focal plane scope. Does that mean you have to get a first focal plane? You've gotta pony up the extra couple hundred bucks to get a first focal plane? Not at all. I, I believe in just like anything that this is just gonna make it easier for me to be able to um, range and get shots could I do it with a second focal plane? I think I know myself well enough um, behind other weapon systems that yes, I would be able to adapt to whatever optic that I had um, on top. This just makes it easier. But second focal plane, uh, it's just really getting out there and shooting it. I think that's a big thing. There's a lot of people who try to try, drive you towards gear, uh, especially in the long range community. That may be not necessarily what you need to get into it. Uh, you can get, I, I just got one for the bench rest. Uh, it is a 24, uh, I think it's like a 9x24x50, by by um, the Crossfire 2. It's a $300 optic. I could put it on, it, and it has, uh, You, I believe you can get it with um, uh, some windage hashes in the reticle uh, and some um, BDC uh, in the reticle. And you could do holdovers with it. Um, there, there is holdover dash marks in there. That scope, full magnification, super, super crisp. Uh, when it came in, I was looking through a shitty piece of glass from inside a shop out about 200 yards. There was a stucco building. I could see the grain in the stucco, clear as if I was right up on it. So the quality of optic that you get for the money uh, is pretty substantial when it comes to Vortex and in most of any of these companies. Burst makes a really good scope um, as well. What I like about Vortex as a company is I know no matter what I pick up, I'm going to be happy. I have seen some Burrs that I was kind of like, eh, yeah, I'm not so sure about that um, after I looked through it. Uh, I don't know that I'd put it on a, a pellet gun, to be quite honest with you. But with the Vortex, I haven't picked up one and been like, oh my God, uh, I wouldn't put this on a pellet gun. And I was being kind of harsh on the burst. Even their worst one, I would I would still use. I mean, it's, it's pretty decent. But um, you can definitely tell a difference in quality. But the Vortex line, they don't have a whole bunch of different models. Um, they've just got different variations of magnification and uh, they've got like three or four different tiers and that makes it super, super simple. A lot of these other manufacturers, they've got so many different 
optics in their lineup that it kind of just clutters it up for me. So I know I can go to Vortex, I'm going to get something decent, uh, and it's going to be a really, really good price uh, for what you're going to get. And again, optical quality is so up with the machining process, and what you'll find out is most places get their glass all from the same place. Uh, they've got machines and processes that they do to pick the best glass. The next tier down gets that second best glass, then third, then fourth. But optical clarity nowadays is uh, not that huge of a deal anymore. Uh, at least my opinion and, and all the scopes that I've looked through. Um, you can definitely tell the difference in a $3,000 scope, but I can't tell $3,000 worth of difference. It's not going to make me shoot any better. That I, that I do know. Um, you know, when I start getting out super long ranges, I might need to upgrade my optic, but I, I think this is going to carry me. This rifle is going to be way more accurate than I will ever be um, for a while, and maybe ever. So uh, I'm very optimistic in this rig. Uh, some of the features, other features that the Vortex has is uh, it's got the illuminated reticle. It's really, really crisp. Even at um, the, you know, full brightness on this, which is really, really bright, it doesn't tint the optic red. Uh, I have seen that on some lower end scopes that uh, going to that full, um, uh, your full illumination, it will turn the um, the reticle the reticle red uh, or, or more than the reticle red the, the whole lens will actually tint red um, it the one great thing that vortex did it's on off every other click so on off you don't have to sit there and twist it all the way back around and then go look through it and make sure that it's uh, it actually turned off all of the features on it are really tactile the um, the magnification ring super super smooth and uh all the turrets super super tactile positive clicks very very easy to use there is a ton of holdover built into the reticle that can get you through almost anything that you're going to need to do at different ranges and, and, and going back to um the first focal plane second focal plane thing i think if you get out and I'm a big proponent of using your equipment. If you use your equipment and you know what your scope is capable of doing, and uh, you know at what magnification uh, at 100 yards uh, your point of impact is going to shift, you can you can kind of figure that out and, and kind of build your own dope chart, I guess you would say, on uh, on what your optic does at different ranges and get you in the ballpark uh, of where you need to be whether you're first focal plane or second focal plane um, it does just make it easier for ranging uh, and you don't have to be at full magnification uh, right out the box to to figure some of those things out on high mirage days with a 24x magnification which is a pretty high magnification um, you can get a lot of mirage and that will mess up your shot uh, because you can't see your target. Uh, other than that, I don't know that there's much else to say about it. I'm just going to go out and keep shooting and uh, and give you guys um, updates periodically. The more I shoot it, the more I do on my bench. Uh, the more 22 shooting I do, I really enjoy shooting 22. It's a very soft shooting caliber. It's very inexpensive to shoot. You can get your mechanics down, your trigger pulls, um, your sighting, where you know when you want it to go bang, you know all those kind of mechanics. And with the 22 is what's great about it is um, it, it is definitely more apprehensive, uh, or or I should say more affected by wind and on um, your trigger squeeze and things of that nature. So. It's a really good training tool to see what you're doing uh, as far as your trigger squeezing uh, or your trigger pull um, and, and and how you're sighting with your optic, uh, you know, kind of getting that consistency. It's, it's a really great round to do that with. Um, 
so I have some groups from today um, that I shot. I won't show you this one because this is my best one. Uh, I'll, I'll show that to you last. So this is about a, uh, this is a five round group right here. This is 22. Um, if you want to check out the other 22 video, this is all shot at 100 yards. Um, you can check out my daughter's 22. I went out and cited it in for today. Uh, and I've got some groups on that. Very, very impressive stuff out of that um, Ruger 1022. So you should definitely check out that video if you're looking into getting some precision 22 stuff. It's it's pretty cool. Um, but this was a this was a five round group. Um, this was the um, federal gold medal match. You can see very very tight group. Uh, this was. This was an MOA group. It's about an inch. It's five rounds. Some guys do five. Some guys do three. Um, I did do a five round group. It's it's under an inch. Um, it, it might look like more than that. It does to me on the computer screen. But a lot of that is at high vis. Uh, and when I taped it back on there, it kind of um, made the black stuff fall out. But the um, the holes in this are. Uh, probably a quarter quarter inch on each side in. Um, so I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but this is a sub MOA group. My first group after I got it sighted in was this. And, you know, just kind of, you know, showing you this is trigger. It's all trigger. These are, this is a two shot group. Um, some people call it a cauliflower or um, some kind of fucking leaf that uh, <laughs> that it, it looks like when you get these ragged holes, um, bullet stacked on bullet, but uh, these two rounds are touching. And then you can see um, when it's straight up and down that it's linear. So this is gonna be, you, when you start seeing this, this is gonna be you either pushing the trigger or pulling the trigger more than likely. Um, or you've got some cheap ass scope, uh, scope rings and your scope's loosened up. Yep, that's it. That is it for that one. Now, this was my best group uh, of the day. All of these are at 100 yards. Um, this was uh, this was PMC. I should say this was um, ball ammo, just the cheap $15 a box stuff. So uh, very impressed with that uh, that shot group. This is a. Um, a sub MOA grouping. This is a three shot group. And uh, all the bullet holes are touching. This one right here is uh, a little far away, but the two are on top of each other. And this one is, a, is about a quarter inch away. This is well under MOA at 100 yards. So this rifle in the capable hands is definitely, I mean, it's a half minute with me. So this, you know, is just a good group that I shot. It it's a, it's capable of half minute, and I'm not a really good rifle shooter at, at this point, at least. And I may never have another group that looks like that. But I went out. It's my third or fourth time behind the rifle. I did shoot that group uh, more often than not. This is what I'm seeing. I'll have a flyer or two. Uh, you know, the moon and the stars aligned and I got a really, really good group there. So, uh, that is, um, federal gold medal match, uh, 168 grain, a uh, really, really nice round. One of the things that I wanted to look at is, um, using the federal gold medal match, uh, in the long range application. So that's about it going on about 30 minutes of me rambling on, uh, I hope I was informative. I hope I helped you out. Really good scope, really good rifle. Um, if you don't want Vortex, I would probably say look at Cytron. If you don't want a Remington, uh, look at the Savage. It makes a really, really great rifle. Uh, if you want something that's going to get you out farther, look at 6.5 Creedmoor. It's a really good round for that too. It's pretty, um, pretty available. There's other, some other good calibers. 
but from what I've seen, the uh, Grendel and the Creedmoor uh, have really, really good ballistics. I built a 6.5 Grendel. Uh, it's got better ballistics coefficient at 1,000 yards than a 308, and it hits harder with a flatter trajectory. So might be something to look into if you're looking to get into something else other than a 308. But for all intents and purposes, really, really good rifle. Can't wait to run it suppressed. Can't wait to do some more videos on it. Show you what uh, show you what's happening uh, in my world. And after I do some competitions and uh, get into some tournaments, let you know what's going on, what worked, what didn't work. Or, uh, I just don't see for the foreseeable future me needing anything else. So thanks for checking it out. Um, again, if there's any questions you have or you uh, need some help picking some stuff out and you don't want to watch a whole bunch of videos and you just want a little bit of insight, uh, hopefully I can help you out. Uh, thanks again for watching and peace.